So I already uploaded a video where I didn't say nothing. This time I'm gonna talk. I gotta say I'm I'm very pleased with how I came out. Uh I went with the Fender Welton because as I mentioned before when I test fitted the kit, my front driver's side wasn't in the greatest shape. So I had a few gaps, so I went in and put the welting on. It pretty much helped seal it all up pretty nice. But as you can see, passenger side, I got better with the welting. I was learning. I've never done welting before. Hell, I've never done fender flares before either. So it was a learning process. Uh, I did the rib nuts, M6, all the way around. The front bumper, I'm not pleased with it at all. It's a fiberglass reproduction bumper. I didn't want to paint a good chrome bumper. But my buddy. Yeah, yeah I did. My buddy. My buddy has the rocket bunny kit. So I'm gonna test fit that front bumper on now. And I'm gonna see how it'll fit. Cause if it is 280, it's almost perfect. Um, so here, if you call, here was my issue down here. Uh, my fender, the rail underneath where you originally jacked the car up from, it's twisted out. Coming from here, and it's twisted out gradually. More and more, so it pushes this out. So I couldn't get perfect alignment. I had to cut, yeah, after I painted, I had to cut out a bunch more in order to get it on there make it line up as much as I could um, that's no reflection on the kit that's a reflection on the imperfection of my car because the, the red uh, the side skirt has a straight edge that you're supposed to line up with that rail and like I said since mine is warped and starting from this point here it pulls itself out coming out this way it pushes the side skirt in the wrong direction so I had to work around that, which messed up the fitment. It messed it up here and messed it up here. So, like, I had a gap here, but now it's nice and sealed. Outside of that, I'm loving the kit. Uh, yeah, everybody has questions about the diffuser. It's full diffuser. It's nice. It's real nice. Uh, the diffuser stretches back. It stretches back pretty far. There it is. So if you look for reference, that's right at the grill. That's how far back the diffuser stretches to where the grill mounts up. Uh, yep, I got to get a grill. I'm probably going to go with the skillet grill. See what happens. Excuse my tape marks. Um, haven't washed the car yet. Car hasn't been washed since it's been painted. So, I mean, considering it's never been washed before, I think that's pretty good. Still playing with my height. Looks like there's rub, but there's no rub. It's for some, it's perfect right now. I can get, well, I can get the pinky in there. I can get the pinky in. Oh, this side fit perfect with the skirt. So this is how the skirt's supposed to fit. It's perfect fitment. This side was fine. That's how it's supposed to fit. So that shows you the quality of the kit there. So I'm still playing my rod height. If I can't get the BC coilovers uh, air cups, then I'll probably I'll probably try to raise it maybe a half an inch. It's no rubbing right now. Um, I got pretty good turn radius. So, no rubbing. But the big thing that helped with that was I had the Techno Toy Tuning GTX2. So, that was big help so I could move the wheels back to adjust. And that was huge. I recommend that for anybody who's serious about it. Hood pins are the next deal. So, first, you see my hood as far down as it goes I'm about 
a little over an eighth of an inch off. I'm closing all the way. So, and what's happening is <sighs> the old hood latch right here is catching the ridges of the plenum. And so what I'm thinking, I might try to scoop another plenum and try to shave all this. See what happens. I'm hoping that it doesn't flex once I shave it. I'm pretty sure those ridges are there to stop it from flexing. But I'm going to try to shave it to see what happens. Uh, and I'm going to be honest. My, my louver vents. This one's broke. Again, I'm going to... I'm going to go with the skillet louver vents. I really like the way those look. And I'm thinking I'm going to swap these and go with the MSA louver vents as well. I think those will give it a decent look. I've really been debating putting the window louvers on and putting the rear louver back on. I know. Too many louvers, some might say. Yeah, well, it's all right. Outside of that stop, the tires are super sticky. I can't do anything in the garage with the tires without it screw, screw, squeaking all over the place. I, uh oh, lock my door. Excuse the mess in the car. There's been some work going on. So I have a vintage air unit mounted in the stock location. It fits really good. Uh, if anybody having AC issues, I recommend this hands down. I still got to straighten up. I got to make one more bracket here. So that way, this will sit straight. Uh, what I did here, I made that bracket, and then I bent it, then I put a rib nut in it, and bolted it up in there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off, and since that's right here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to Teflon tape around that bolt just in case, keep the water out. Not that it's gonna see that much water, but it will get driven. If it starts raining, I'm just gonna be driving. It's not made to be a trailer queen. Uh, make one more bracket here, but this unit here is made to cool off uh, the Tri-5, Tri-5, Tri-5 Chevys. So if you know anything about the Tri-5 Chevys, those are bolts on the inside. So cooling off this little thing is not gonna be an issue. That fan blow, it, that, that fan kicks. The fan kicks. Uh, I figured out alternator issue. It's unfortunate, but it was just like I figured. So my route, when I was coming back around the alternator, I had the alternator raised to here with a, with a custom bracket. And when I was coming around, it was touching the alternator it was touching all the all the way around and on top. So it was too many contact points and it was wearing the bearings. So I added the power steering pulley back in just to see. No more squeak. My alternator charge is fine at about 14 and a half to 15 volts. But a new issue crept up on me. Can you see that? If you know what I'm looking at, you see the belt is off by about a quarter inch alternator is sticking under the pulley by about an eighth of an inch. All right, Damon. And if you look at my tensioner, it's also about an eighth of an inch on the line from the tensioner as well. There is no adjustment in how far back the alternator goes. Um, I mean, I bought, I bought a red car, so I, I can't imagine what might have happened that makes that not line up but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the alternator off take it to the alternator shop I'm gonna have them press another pulley on and try to pull it out about an eighth of an inch and then that'll solve my belt issue here once I turn the car on it pulls it out and then what I'll do I'll make I'll make another I'll get a spare power steering pump and I'll cut it all open and I'll just make a pulley out of it so it looks a little better still gotta clean up under the hood. I have all the hoses for plumbing my new AC unit. Uh, I still have to make my template for my hose for the radiator, but hopefully I get all that done this weekend. Uh, outside of that, I have one electrical gremlin. Um, I tested it. 
So some reason when I leave the battery on, well, and leave the car hooked up, I come back after about four days, car won't start. So got a, got a gremlin. I'm gonna find it before I finish, of course. How about that license plate though? Yeah, it's not fake, that's legit. The wife and I wanted mistress. Well, my wife wanted mistress, it wasn't available. So we're going with that one. Just put it in the garage, car. So that's it. Got my power windows installed. Well, they were already installed, but they work. Put all the glass in except for the windshield and the hatch. The only reason I didn't put those in, I'm still working in the hatch. I gotta build my floor out. So probably next week or so. I'll start building the floor out around the fuel cell and stuff. Now I figure it's easy if I can just reach in versus trying to work in that limited space. Windshield's not in because I haven't put the dash in yet. And I, it's, if you ever put a dash in, it's 100% easier to put the dash in with the windshield out. Uh, outside of that, I'm making a push to try to get ready for Houston's Autorama. Um, I'm too small time for a show like SEMA. I don't think my bill, I think my bill might be frowned on. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not poor quality, but it's not a top shelf quality. But uh, for me, it's great. It is great. It shines good. Like I said, it hasn't been washed. It's really dusty. Got all my trim on. So it's not black, it's uh, satin brown. It's the same brown that I have glossed in my headlight bucket. It's the Ford Earthstone. It's the same brown, but I did it with a satin clear. And I really love the way that satin clear came out on that brown. It's the same, same for all my accent pieces. It's a satin brown. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan on how the carbon fiber and gold offset with each other. But this brown, it looks good. Uh, I hate I didn't get this video in sunlight, but when you're really up on it, even with the satin, with sunlight, you can see there's a, a gold flake in it that, that really accents the car really well. Look at those doors. My next crutch is my mirrors. I don't know what I want to do. Fender mirrors are always an option. This year, you got to drill into the fenders. Yeah. I don't want to drill into the fenders. I know, little risk, little reward. Big risk, big reward. But I just don't want to do it. Uh, then I have my door mirror idea, which I'll probably still... I got an extra set of this strip here. And what I'll do, build a bracket. Nice triangle bracket. Weld it on. And then I'll drill the holes in it and put motorcycle mirrors right here little main motorcycle mirrors see how I like that I'll try that first since that's less evasive on my car but either way it's coming along uh, Autorama's in November I have until I think mid 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 October so next week to register for it so we'll see where we're at like I said I got all the interior in the attic what I'm thinking I'm gonna do for the seats I'm thinking I'm gonna get a pair of uh, 350Z bucket seats and take the headrest off and then get them covered so it looks like the headrest was never there. See how I like that. It's a little different. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for checking.